Uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Um, you guys see our new backdrop here, pretty neat. Excited to announce, uh, talk about our partnership a little bit with CQ. Obviously a, a local brand that was uh, founded here in Maryland. You know, our agreement with them comes with some collaborations that focus on community engagement, which is huge for us as an athletic department. And for us as a football program, something that's really important and near and dear to us is giving back to the local community and, and the collaborations that focus on uh, service and civic engagements are really important in terms of that type of partnership. Um, this will be a great partnership for years to come for our athletic department, for CQ, as well as the DMV area. So we're really proud to, uh, or excited to be uh, partners with CQ. Um, have had a chance to review the film from Saturday. And, and as I said, Saturday after the game, uh, a big, big win for us. And we knew going into that game that we were facing a formidable opponent in, in SMU, uh, one of the better teams there in the AAC, if not in the country, as I thought, you know, based on how I voted, a team that was top 25 program and, and, they, and I think they showed it. But I also think our team showed a tremendous amount of resiliency and how we battled back. We really needed a game like that. I would have preferred not to have it, but uh, it's something that we can definitely learn and grow from. Uh, with the way that game played out, it was exciting to see uh, how our team responded to adversity and, and I liked what I saw. Obviously it was not a clean game for us. Uh, when you talk about the penalties, um, disappointing because there's nobody that uh, stresses the importance of playing the game the way it should be played on a daily basis. Uh, then us and our staff, our players understand it. But obviously with me being the leader of this program, I've got to get those things fixed, which we're working to do. Um, we beat a really good SMU team and to be 3-0 in non-conference play is a testament to our players and the work that they put in. We now shift our attention to, to conference play and we open up with the return, uh, reigning conference champion on the road unbelievable opportunity for us as a program. We talked to our team yesterday a little bit about going up to Michigan and going up to Ann Arbor. Um, we have nothing to lose. I mean, we're going to face the reigning champion. We know we'll get uh, a really, really good team. Uh, they're well coached. Um, they're one of the least penalized teams opposite of us. They're one of the least penalized teams. They play a physical brand of football. Uh, they got playmakers across the board on the offensive side of the ball defensively. I know they lost a bunch of guys, but when you watch them in the first three games, they play very physical. Um, they've got an exotic third down package, which tells us we've got to be really good on first and second down in terms of trying to keep that, that blitz package off the field. Um, and, and they've got a lot of new players coming in that, that really are playing hard, and I think they've taken on the personality of their coaches there. Uh, but like I said, it's a great opportunity for us against the reigning Big Ten champ to go on the road and and really, like I said, lead caution to the wind and go up and try to play uh, to the best of our ability and, and keep a game, keep the game really tight and get it to a fourth quarter and you never know what can happen. So, um, like I said, our team is excited to, to go up and, and have this opportunity so early in the season against a, a really good uh, team in Michigan. Our captains for this week, Dante Demas Jr., uh, Jahari Branch, and, and um, Austin Fontaine will lead us up, into, up to Ann Arbor this weekend. So. I'll open up to questions. Sorry, Dave, to your right. Mike, the non-conference schedule is often set years in advance, but how do you feel this year's non-conference schedule has best prepared your team for Big Ten play? Well, um, playing on the road against an out-of-conference schedule it makes it a little easier for us on the road in terms of going on the road against Michigan uh, because we've traveled now. We've kind of got into the – our players and the new players in our program understand what it's like when you go on the road. So uh, that the game down to Charlotte, I think, afforded us a practice opportunity of what it's like and how we prepare and, and how it's different. So um, playing SMU, you know, I said to Damon yesterday in our weekly meeting, it's amazing that we somehow always find one of the better teams that aren't necessarily a, a Big Ten type. I, I looked at that as a Big Ten game when I, when I knew we were playing them. Uh, this year as we pay, prepared this summer, I said, this is like playing another Big Ten opponent. And so uh, we, 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 we learned and, and got a lot out of that game. And I'm hopeful that the things that we are able to correct with a win, that if we get those things corrected, it'll benefit us in the long run. Um, I, know, I know you mentioned before the season, you liked your young running backs, but has, has their effectiveness through these first three games exceeded your hopes in any way? And how has that helped even fully end the past game? 
No, it hasn't exceeded it because I've quietly been confident in this group. If you think back, uh, you know, the bowl game against Virginia Tech is when we first kind of featured these guys. You know, Roman played a vital role in that game. Antoine played a vital role in that game. Kobe was one of the young guys that played quite a bit for us last year. And then, you know, bringing in Ramon Brown and being able to get a player like him through recruiting has really helped that room. And so I'm not surprised because they, if you, you look at those guys coming out of high school, they were all talented, highly recruited guys that we were very fortunate to be able to get. Coach, uh, Maryland's lone win at Michigan back in 2014. You're the offensive coordinator. Don't believe you've been back there since. You know, what do you kind of remember about that game eight years ago? And is there anything from that experience that you can you know, relate to your team going back to Michigan this week? Yeah, it's a long time ago, and I, I don't I mean, I know it's a great place, a great venue, great um, place to go play a game. You know, they're one of the blue bloods in college football, and so, you know, but I don't remember a lot of, out of about that game. Uh, I do know that, you know, anytime you go to a place like Michigan and come away with a win, um, you know, you have to give credit to the team that we had in 2014, but there's nobody on that team left in this, in this locker room, so. I don't think that will have any bearing on what happened Saturday. Uh, as we talked about as a team, it's just really important that the consistency in which we get ready to play, um, understanding we are going to face the reigning Big Ten champ. And um, to me, if you don't get excited about that opportunity, I mean, that's why you come to Maryland uh, to have this opportunity to play really good teams like Michigan. And uh, to me, they kind of set the standard for our league and set the bar. And, we always talk about trying to close the gap on teams like that. Uh, this year affords us an opportunity to see kind of where we fit. Hey, Coach. Uh, after the bowl win, you said that the program took a major step. Uh, I was wondering, how much do you value like playing, uh, being competitive, or even pulling off victories against like the top tier teams in the Big Ten? How much do you value that in turn in this process? Um, kind of like a, an equation. They all have the same value. Um, you know, beating a Michigan that had have more value in terms of our team than winning a game against another Big Ten opponent because we really don't focus a lot on the opponent. And I'll continue to say this. I mean, what happens on Saturday, I'd say 90% of it's going to be due to what we do and not necessarily what Michigan does to us. And that's just the way the game of football is. And, you know, as you look at the first three games here, uh, we have a lot of work to, to do still as a team, but I really like the direction that this team is heading. I like the culture of the locker room. You know, I think I said this to our team uh, yesterday in our team meeting when we were putting it, uh, the game behind us is that I don't know if we would have won that game Saturday the last three years with the type of penalties and kind of how we played and put ourselves in a hole other than culture in which we're creating kind of showed through and that's what was unique and uh, if there was any silver lining in the way the game played out was that we found a way to win. Hey coach, uh, going back to the penalties, you know, it is a better experience, a group, a lot of veterans on the team, so specifically how is something that, something that you can kind of get fixed in like the short term? You got kids? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, I'll just leave it at that. No. no. If you have kids, you have an understanding. And I, I, I said this to our team yesterday, I actually showed them a video of every penalty. And I showed the commentary of everything you guys said and the orgy of penalties and the Twitter pops up with all the quotes of everything and the you know, thug mentality of the team. And those words, those are hurtful words. And I played the video and let them see what people thought of our program. And as a parent, you send your kid to school they have a foundation of how you raise them. Sometimes they don't act in character. And what do you do, kick them out your house? Do you, you punish them. And so we handle punishments and we deal with it inside out. But I think people that have kids understand what it's like to have them go out on the field and maybe play outside of what you've trained them to do. And so that's why I asked the question because they're still kids, I'm a parent, I've got to get them to understand that the name on the front of the jersey represents us and we got to continue to work to do better. Back to the camera, on your left. Uh, hey, Coach. <clears throat> Thank you. I uh, want to talk a little bit about with him. Uh, eight career touchdowns, five of which are 40-plus yards. Do you expect to see him uh, fulfilling that deep ball role, and what are your expectations for him going into conference play? 
Yeah, he's one of our best players, and we have to continue to find ways to create opportunities for him. Um, you know, Saturday, again, you know, I keep going back to this magic number. I, mean, I think we had 61 gradable plays, and they had 100. You know, we lost a few series with a turnover on kickoff, a one-play drive where we fumbled the ball on the first play of it, which limits opportunities. We haven't played very well on third down um, in, in the last couple of games lead the nation in yards per play or one of the top yards per play teams, which means we're doing explosive things. But to get opportunities, we need more plays. And we have to either play with faster tempo, we've got to be better on third down, we've got to not turn the ball over. And when you do that, now as a play caller, you know we're able to get these talented players more opportunities to do the things that Rock Kim has shown he has the ability to do. Heather, I got kids, I got you. I got you. Appreciate it, Heather. Yeah. <laughs> Um, going back to kind of just playing a, a top five team, I know you say a lot of it's focused on what, what Maryland does, but when whether it's your time at Maryland or Alabama, when you're playing one of those top teams, is there some just overarching messages at the nothing to lose, or like what are you mostly trying to convey to a team, to your teams, when you're playing with an opponent like that? So I think, and I, I used this a week ago with them, and, and I'll, I'll, you know, I asked them about grandma's macaroni and cheese. I said, when she makes it on Christmas, is it any better than when she makes it on a normal Sunday dinner? And they all say, no, she, her macaroni and cheese is slamming. It's great. I mean, it's unbelievable. Well, the who we play doesn't change. It's the consistency of how we prepare to play, which is what makes grandma's macaroni and cheese good on Christmas Day or a regular Sunday after church. And so I, I've got tried to get us out of this mentality of, riding the wave of emotions of we prepare differently for Charlotte than we do Ohio State. We prepare differently for Michigan than we do SMU because that's not the case as a football coach. We don't go in and say, hey, it's Michigan week. Let's, let's all of a sudden ramp up our intensity because that's just not how you go about building a winning program. And that's, again, something I learned along the way from, from some of the good experiences down at Alabama that you know what, you, you learn to prepare consistently the right way and the product on Saturday tends to be really consistent. I like that message, I'm from Mazzaball soup, the mac and cheese, but I, I think I'm going to get it. Fourth row center, George. Hey, Mike, uh, Michigan's had a change at quarterback since last year from Kate McNamara to J.J. McCarthy. Uh, does McCarthy do anything different or present any different challenges for you, or is it still kind of a very similar offensive style? So their philosophy is they want to run the football. Um, they have explosive playmakers on the perimeter. JJ is an explosive playmaker with his feet and his arm. Um, they, they, they will feature the quarterback run because of that ability. They play to his strengths, but he also has shown the propensity uh, is that when you commit to stopping him as a runner, that he can take the, the shots that come off of the play actions down the field where they've got talented receivers. Uh, you know, the Bale kid, and number 14, fast, fast player. Uh, you know, hitting in. They got a bunch of really talented perimeter players, and you know. But when you put them on tape on offense, um, you know JJ's dynamic with his feet, but also has the ability to throw the ball. Um, but they do want to run the football, and I, I expect them to line up. And you know, they had their way with this a year ago. I think you'll see a lot of some of the same. Um, I just hope that we play a little differently. Coach, going back to Saturday against SMU, you guys allowed zero points in the fourth quarter compared to 27 in the first three. What was the biggest difference from a mentality standpoint that you saw from your defense? Uh, I don't think it was a difference in the mentality. I, I just thought we, we got some turnovers. Um, we were able to get underneath. Our, our, we dropped eight uh, quite a bit in that game because of you know Mordecai's ability to, to roll the ball. I thought we did a better job with our under coverage in the second half where we got tips that led to interceptions or we had to, he had to put a little more air on the ball to allow a couple of plays. Uh, when we got down in the red area, teams like SMU run out of space and we did a really good job of kind of containing it. Um, so I, I just thought that we did a little better job of just playing underneath the things to, to force the quarterback to throw the ball and put some air on it and allow our safeties to make some plays. Coach, uh, I guess today is one of the days to talk about the growth of the program. You have a new sponsor. You're on national television on FS1 on Saturday. You're the game of the week. This week, you're on FS1 on national television again. How does all this change fit into your grading of the program, and how does all this notoriety help where you're headed? None of that means anything to us as a team. Now, obviously, for the athletic department, all those things are great. 
it's great for our fans to, to get to watch us play on, on a regular TV network. Um, but none of that means anything to us as a program other than the opportunity to go up and play the reigning Big Ten champion in Ann Arbor. Um, and, and it's going to be a great opportunity for our team. Hey, Coach, I want to ask, uh, Kayshawn Warham has looked really solid um, so far this year. How's it, what, are, what are your thoughts, overall thoughts, on how he's played thus far? Minus the 15-yard uh, penalty where I had to bench him for pretty much the whole second half, um, I thought he's played really, really well. I mean, and again, not to knock him for the penalty because he's a young player. Uh, as I said, a lot like you know, young kids in today's society made a mistake there, but his play as a football player, I mean, big sack early in the game, has played a lot of snaps for a true freshman, uh, has a kind of a veteran feel for the game, uh, the interception that Bo Brady got, he was the guy that got underneath it, got the ball tipped. So I'm really pleased with his football production. I'm pleased with how he approaches the game. I mean, he came in here with the mentality to play early, and he's been a very productive player for us. Uh, Coach, how important has the uh, addition of Chad Ryland been to this team? He not only kicks the ball in the end zone, he consistently kicks it out of the end zone. And how much is his range on field goals? It looks like it could be towards 50 or at least 45. Yeah, you know, we, we, we talked about the addition of Chad, and, you know, that was Coach Zook's last present that he gave to me before he left to join the XFL. Uh, was recruiting Chad to, out of the transfer portal and by far probably one of the more meaningful gets out of the transfer portal for us and not just his ability to kick but if you've watched him and how he's integrated into a new football family he's already one of the guys that shows tremendous leadership he's part of our leadership council um, he's definitely a weapon I mean you know how good it feels man, I go and I shake his hand after every kick it through the end zones I said man this sure feels good because I'm not holding my breath with the ball being returned and having to get the ball tackled. Um, he's shown the consistency when we want to kick the ball through on field goals. Uh, he's been great with that. Um, every game we go into, we ask his range, and usually the 40-yard line has kind of been his kick line. That you know, in each of the last three games, obviously that changes depending on the wind, depending on the weather conditions, but. Uh, there's no doubt he's been a tremendous asset to us as a program, just just as a leader, as a kicker. Uh, his ability to get the ball out of the end zone on kickoffs allow us to not have to go down and cover kicks, which, as I talk about analytics, the drive start average of our opponents plays a major role in uh, being able to you know, minimize points. So, great addition. Let's get to your left last one. Coach, Dante and Bo both had some really big performances last week. What can you say about just – how they stepped up into their role as starters and just how they've grown from last year to this year? Yeah, I think those two guys are both byproducts of kind of what we try to do around here. They play a lot of football as freshmen. You know, they, I, I told somebody I thought back last year, the Illinois game where Dante was on the field that last drive and uh, to win the, help us win the game against Illinois. But to play young players in meaningful moments in games like that, the, the price is invaluable to you know, the development of your team as a whole. So both Bo and Dante's, they play football around here from the time they've stepped on campus and we benefited from it this year because now they're thrust into starter, uh, starting positions or leadership roles and it's not like they're breaking themselves in. So we're gonna to continue to try to do that where we can develop our roster and, you know, injuries are part of the game and, you know, we have to have guys ready to step in and play and both those guys are a testament to just how we develop our team.